Varmint did a video about the importance of voting and how that helps change the system. And I agree with this idea, but I want to add some important points to the points he made. Voting is important. It, it actually is the foundation of this whole thing that we call democracy. And take it or leave it, and say what you will about the system, voting still does have relevance. The, the thing is, we have a limited relevance with our voting as long as we are uninformed voters. When you're voting based purely on a party line, or just because this guy seemed to have a better sound bite, or just the whim take you, or whatever, I've heard so many different reasons for why people voted for whoever they did, and quite often their reasons are not very well thought out, to be honest. It comes down to more of who they liked, just as a, well, he looks better, you know? Or it, it really comes down to this, oh, he just gives me a good feeling. And while that might be something, you know, like you should go with your gut feeling to a point, if you don't know the first thing about their policies, who are you voting for, really? Do you know? Do you know what they're going to do when they get in office? Do you actually understand the implications? Because voting is one of those things we can do that is a power, but it also comes with the responsibility, which is we all got to live with this. Like, when we vote a guy in, he's in. We actually have to live with him being there, and he will have powers, and he is supposed to represent us, she, whatever, you know. That person is supposed to represent us. And, well, if you're not paying any attention to who they are or what they stand for, how are, how are you supposed to know the first thing about them representing you? And another big point here is when people are voting, they constrain themselves to a two-party system, which America is only by choice. We have other parties. We have a lot of them, actually. But so many people act as though there is Republican or Democrat and then they dismiss the third parties as, well, nobody votes for them. So, as Varmint noted, this is sort of a self-fulfilling prophecy, especially in this particular circumstance where nobody votes for the third party candidates because they don't get any votes. Do you see the circular logic involved in that? Where we're not voting for them so they don't get votes and we won't vote for them because they're not getting votes. This is literally a self-fulfilling prophecy here, where if everybody who wanted to vote for a third party did it, instead of just dismissing the idea because no one else is doing it, all of a sudden there'd be a lot of people voting for one, wouldn't there? It'd be a serious issue. Theoretically speaking, if everybody, you know, or at least enough people decided suddenly they're voting for Green Party, Green Party's in office. That's how democracy works. If enough people vote for a party, they have power. People seem to dismiss this idea out of hand, but in reality, that is the core essence of democracy, and it can work that way. Unfortunately, people have bought into the Republican and Democrat-only idea for so long that voting has become sort of almost meaningless. I say almost because it's never truly meaningless, but it becomes close to meaningless when people limit themselves to these two slightly dis, you know, these two slightly dissimilar candidates rather than looking at this full spectrum of different political ideologies that we actually have available. They're all there, represented in all sorts of different fashions, just nobody even looks. And that is why I have a bit of a problem with the ignorant voter. Like, to a point, I understand it. Like, there's a lot of politics going on, and a lot of it is kind of nonsensical bullshit. We can be honest about that, I think. A lot of what people are discussing seems like nonsensical bullshit. And it's a difficult thing to get into and understand all of the nuances of various political things. But if you really want to be an effective voter, you have to dive in there and at least try to understand the basic ideas that are going on. If you can at least grasp a few key issues and important things that you feel strongly about, then you can make an informed vote. You can actually sit there and say, well, I'm not voting with the Democrats because, well, they're the Democrats. You're saying, well, I'm voting for this guy and the Democrats because he stands for these key issues. And on the surface, that might not seem too different, still Democrat voting, but as the second example, if you're that person, you understand why you're voting for it. You can advocate for your party position better. You can stand up for your beliefs more, and you can actually sound reasonable when it's brought up. Like, instead of being one of those... 
basically ideological dunces, if you will, who just say, think Democrat is right, Republican is wrong because the, the people said so. Doesn't matter, fill in the people with family, church, whatever, you know, particular group. All right, let's make a point here real quick, which is if you are voting for something or believing in something just because another group of people told you to, it's probably not good. <laughs> just straight out, if it's because, well, the church says I need to vote this way, or my family votes this way, so I vote this way. No, you're missing the point. An expression of free will, even if you want to say that voting is useless, it's sort of an expression of free will. You're voting, right? Vote for who you want to vote for. You only get to do it every so often anyway. Don't let other people influence your vote unless they do it with facts and reason. Like if they say, hey, don't vote for this guy because long laundry list of bad things he actually did, well, yeah, let that sway your opinion. But if he says, don't vote for him because, well, I don't want you to vote for him, well, that's pretty stupid, isn't it? So be informed as a voter, but vote the way you want to vote, not the way someone else tells you to vote. Vote because facts and reasons and your beliefs tell you that that particular candidate is the right choice. And even if they're a third-party candidate or something that seems out there, vote with your conscience. Vote with what you think is right. There's no such thing as an invalid vote, unless you're voting for Mickey Mouse. <laughs> but even if your candidate doesn't get elected, don't buy into that idea that you've wasted your vote or that your vote was meaningless unless your candidate got elected. No, it's a statement. And if a third-party candidate starts getting, like, a large chunk of votes, that will do things. It will affect change, even if they don't get elected. If the Green Party or some other party, any other third party, got a suddenly large increase in their voting percentages, well, the Democrats, Republicans, they'll stand up and take notice. They'll have to listen and look because numbers are what matter in this game. Votes are what matter, really. So, quite simply, vote. But vote informed. Just something to think about. And very important keynotes here. Um, the two major parties usually pick up the major, uh, some major platforms from the third parties when they get a significant portion of the vote. You can affect change, it's just you like, can't look for something big like getting a third party candidate in as president type idea. Why can't you? It could happen as soon as everybody did it. Wouldn't it? As soon as everybody voted for wanting to be in presidency. <laughs> it's democracy. It's how it works. If everybody decided to vote for the fucking Nazi party, there'd be Nazis in office. But not everybody's going to vote for the Nazi party. No, but it's not about everybody. It's about 51%, basically. We can't deny that this is partially a fault of the media and their use of rhetoric especially. And there's also the point of the education system largely removing civics class. Those are its own videos, dude. <laughs> okay.